Hi everybody, my name's Doug Wilson, and this is Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors. So you want to order a custom Kydex sheath system from Yellowhawk, or anybody else for that matter. However, I can only speak about what we do here, okay? Because I know, as sure as I'm sitting here, that we do a lot more than most of the other makers out there when it comes to carries and options and we do a lot it can be confusing I get it so if you guys stay tuned we're gonna go through some different options and carry options that might be right for you we'll be right back Okay, so let's let's start with how you're going to carry a sheath, okay? Now, here at Yellowhawk, we can give you several ways to carry the same sheath. I mean, I actually build it into the sheath, but you have to tell me how you want to carry it first. I don't, I'm not a, a mind reader, right? You got to say, hey, Doug, um, I want to be able to cross draw it with my right hand. I want to be able to dangle it with my right hand, right? Draw it with my right hand. I want to be able to um, maybe wear it as a necker or whatever. And in a lot of cases, I can give you three, four, five different carries in the same sheath. Now, yes, if it costs me, if it takes me more time to build it, it's going to be more expensive. This is all custom work, right? If you're not looking for a custom, one-of-a-kind, bomb-proof, military-grade sheath system for your knife, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> all right? So let me get, let me, let me gra just grab a sheath, and we'll go over some carry options. Now, when it comes to carry options, you have to consider the size of the sheath. Uh, and it usually coincides with the size of the knife, right? Okay, so this sheath here is made for a Topps Tahoma field knife, okay? Topps Tahoma field knife, okay? And this is one I built for it to sell. I don't do it often, but if I got a little bit of time at the end of the day or something, I'll spend a few extra hours building a sheath that I'm going to sell. Okay, um, and the Topps Tahoma Field Knife is a very popular knife. A lot of guys have it, and they the knives run from lot to lot to lot pretty much the same, as far as I've been able to tell. Okay, that's not always the case, but with this knife, it is. Okay, um, all right, so here we go. So let's just focus on the carry. Okay, number one, you could put this on your belt. Okay, it's got a combat lock belt clip and it's actually on a mount plate, so you can put it wherever you want. Okay, that's key here. The mount plate makes it more versatile to carry on your belt. Okay, it allows you to put that, that clip in the perfect position for you. And if the holes aren't there for you, drill them yourself. Just put a couple holes in there, in the plate, and you're off to the races. Okay? I don't have any problem with that. Um, just don't drill them too big. That's all. Um, so we got the combat lock belt clip, right? And right now it's in cross draw mode. So he's able to wear it like this. Okay? cross draw right anywhere along here he can put it okay you can also take it off put it in the vertical position if you want it to ride higher on your right side to draw with your right hand okay we also got a voodoo dangler system here okay now I've tested this system and it is very strong you literally have to break the kydex right in order to break this 
uh, assembly, okay? And I haven't had anybody do it yet. I have had one person break the tabby dangler. I've had them do it, right? But that's that's a strong one too. I switched over to this because it's more versatile and it's easier to remove, okay? The only thing is, is make sure that this screw right here is tight all the time. You just got to check it. It's a machine. It's just like anything else you work with. You got to check the machine before you use it. Okay? To make sure you're going to get the maximum benefit from that machine and that it's not going to fail you in the field. Okay? So just make sure that screw is tight. If you want me to lock tight that screw, I will. Generally, I don't. I just crank it down and I expect you to keep it that way. Basically. Okay? Um... And I haven't had any problems with it. This is a good, strong system. This plate is doubled. I use thicker than 093 most of the time for the main sheath. So you actually got to break that thing to get it to fail. Okay? And I haven't had it happen. I've been doing these for a couple years now. Alright? Okay. So that's the... That's the Voodoo Dangler system. And you can remove that. Just unscrew the screw, take the whole thing off. It's really convenient. And really strong. And really effective. That's what I go for. Strong, convenient, effective, simple. Okay? Um, it's not a whole lot of moving parts, right? I can also do this as a leg drop. Without the D-ring. Okay? So if you don't want that much play in it. Okay? I can eliminate the D-ring and do it as a leg drop where it's nice and stiff, like this. Okay? <clears throat> Alright. Um, so that's the Voodoo Dangler system. <clears throat> when you put it in your pack, you can fold it down, put it away, slip this thing in your pack if you want. Um, you don't have to take it off if you're wearing it on your belt. What I do is, I just put it on my belt and then I... Let that thing sit like this. And it sits pretty much right there. But, like I said, you can remove it as well. Okay? You can actually remove anything off of any of my sheaths to slim them down and make them more lightweight. Um, I'm real conscious about how heavy these things are. So, I build them super strong, but still lightweight. It's, it's in the technique, really. Um, okay, so there's that for carries, all right? Now, this sheath you can also use as a baldric carry. You clip into this D-ring here, and this D-ring will <clears throat> remove this, okay? You don't have to remove it. Clip into this D-ring, and then I'll put a shackle down here that you can clip into, and you can wear it in baldric mode. Simple, effective. Okay? Alright, so there's that one. Like I said, this one's for sale. This is a firesteel.com fire steel. Okay? So this this rig is a little bit more expensive because of that. Alright, they're they're pretty expensive. The the uh ferro rod alone was like 25 bucks. Okay. Um and it's a four inch by three eighths, I think. And then you got a ceramic hone here, right? On the back, I gave you a nice, very effective striker for the uh, for the ferro rod, okay? Um, and if you don't want to take it off the sheath, just use it while it's on the sheath. Just flip it out, hold it like this, right? So the sheath becomes the handle, and. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Okay, takes a little practice, clockwise, always clockwise, guys, and that screw will stay tight. All right, so there it is. This is um, Cryptek Coyote Micro, or no, just Coyote Cryptek, okay? Um, and then Black Raptor for the options, okay? I got the colored uh, recess washers, good scuba webbing everything's quality i don't i don't put anything cheap on my sheets it's just not worth it if you can't pay the price i get it okay i'll try to make it you know as
budget-minded as possible, but it's still a custom sheath with great materials and time-tested designs and options. I mean, they work and they work well, or I wouldn't build them. Okay, so there's that one. Um, you can also take this off and put a molly lock on. You know, a molly lock. All right. So there's that one. Let's put that one away. Um, what else we got? Okay, so instead of the voodoo dangler, we have the raptor dangler assembly where it actually clips into a tech lock or a combat lock belt clip. Okay. It'll clip into a tech lock or a combat lock belt clip. Even a small tech lock it'll clip into. Okay? And basically it works like this. You open up the clip. You take the assembly off. Right? To wear it in whatever. Cross draw. Or, and then, you know, if you want to go to right hand cross draw, just reconfigure the clip here to where it's in a canted position. I like that canted position, okay, where it's at like a 35, 40 degree angle, and it gets the handle of the knife up a little bit, and it just makes it more ergonomic to draw from the left side with your right hand, okay? But can you wear it this way? Absolutely. It's, the handle's going to droop, that's all. Everybody has that problem. Well, that's why I take that clip and I cant it a little bit, and that doesn't solve the problem but it helps a great deal okay um so that's the raptor dangler assembly okay and i can make this as a leg drop too it doesn't have to be a dangler i like danglers they're really convenient you can flip them out of the way when you sit down if you have to take a knee or something it's not jamming you you know in the side because it hits the ground first or whatever it's got some play to it all right so there's that. That's the Raptor Dangler Assembly. We can do that. This one's more expensive than the Voodoo. It takes me longer to build it. Okay? And it's it's a completely custom build. Right? I don't prefab these and just pull them out of a drawer and put them together. I Everyone is built for the sheet that it goes on. Okay? Alright, so there's that one. So you can see the mount plate on there too. Ceramic. Right, this one has a ceramic cone. This is the um, Phobos Tier 1. Phobos Tier 1. These are on sale right now. They just dropped last night, from what I hear. Okay? So, these are on sale now. The Tier 1. Alright? And then, we got... Uh, Uh, face mount tactical flashlight. This is a Phoenix E05. Really small, really bright. Okay? Um, you can use it while it's on the sheath, too. You don't have to remove it. Got this thing on your belt or wherever. You just turn it on and point that thing wherever you need it to go. Right? It just takes a little nudge. You know how it works. All right? Then reach down, turn it off. Okay? I have the uh, Phoenix... Let me see if I got it in my pocket. I have the Phoenix E12 V2. Okay? This is a nice light. They, they just come out with this one over the last couple months. And I really like it. If it'll fit on a sheath, I suggest you put this one on. It's got a back detent button. Three different lum, uh, uh, brightnesses, 160 lumens max. Um, really a nice light. It's got a dual um, pocket clip, double pocket clip. Um, and sometimes I'll take the pocket clip off, right? Because you really don't need it in the system. Or if you want to keep the pocket clip, I'll make little cutouts in the holder that the pocket clip will slip into okay just like i say it takes me longer to do that okay so the v2 e the e12 v2 nice light nice light okay face mount ferro rod standard compass um this is what this owner wanted on this sheath system okay 
This was actually um, uh, a photo campaign for Phobos. That's why I built this. Eric asked me to build a really nice sheath for the Tier 1. So, I did. And then they took photos of it and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, it also has a Voodoo Dangler dimple right here. If you want to convert it to a Voodoo Dangler one day or whatever. Okay? Um, live fire on the back, right? Live fire. Okay? It's a sure fire all the time. Great stuff. Uh, I think I mentioned the ceramic rod on the side. This might also be a fine diamond rod sharpener too. Okay? And here's how, here's how I do it in the field. Generally, I don't let my knife get dull in the field. So, I might opt for just a ceramic so I can hone it back. Okay? You don't really have to sharpen it if it's not dull. Okay? Because the diamond rods, they take steel off. Okay? These just take a little bit of steel and straighten up the edge and make it sharper. Okay, so it's a big difference between a, a ceramic cone and a diamond rod sharpener, which will take steel off of the blade if it's dull. Okay, and you need to bring it back to an edge. Okay, but most guys can do a uh, do it with a ceramic. Okay, <clears throat> the diamond rods are for field use. Okay. If that knife should get dull, you can bet your bottom dollar that that diamond rod is going to bring it back. Okay? It's, more, it's like a uh, uh, shit hits the fan type thing, right? Oh, man. My, my knife is really dull, right? That's okay. I got a diamond rod to bring it back. Okay? Uh, and then you strop it after you're done using the diamond rod. It's, it's easy. Um, Take some practice, but it's not that hard. Okay, so there it is. This is a uh, black basket weave. And um, what is this called? Broadsword or something like that? I can't remember. I can't remember. I call it broken glass kydex. It's the broken glass kydex. Okay, so there's that one. Raptor dangler assembly. Great, 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 great invention. Great invention. Game changer. Okay, um, what else do we have here? Uh, okay, here is my personal Raptor, okay? This is the Delta Whiskey Raptor, okay? It's a chopper bushcrafter. It's got a uh, nice belly for chopping, <clears throat> and it's pretty damn effective. It's more effective than a kukri, all right? In, in my opinion, okay? It's a little bit heavier, and that belly really, <laughs> really chops well, okay? Um... <clears throat> Kukri's are much different than this, okay? You can see this is an officer's kukri, and you got the raptor on the bottom there, okay? Big difference, okay? You got a straight edge here for bushcrafty stuff, feather sticks, notching, stuff like that, and then the chopping blade, okay? You got a nice, robust handle. This handle here, <laughs> That's not very robust. I, I can't... It's, it's uncomfortable sometimes. It's so small. Okay? So you got a nice robust handle for chopping, for choking up, for doing your feather sticks or whatever. Really... Really a nice tool. I'm not a huge big knife guy, but this one, I like it. Okay? Um, 90 degree spine. You can, you can strike a ferro rod with that all day long. Scrape bark. Whatever, all right? So, there's the sheath system I built for it. Um, this is a pouch system. Now, this is what we call a Sear 1 survival system. If it has a pouch, it's a Sear 1, okay? S-E-R-E, -E, Survival Evasion Resistance Escape, okay? Um, and then on the back, I have a molly lock clip. And this is for specifically putting it on pal's webbing, okay? Um, or, or any webbing on a pack, okay? A pack strap, all right? You can also put a tech lock on this, 
take that off put a tech lock on um now i did not set it up for any kind of dangle or carry it's too heavy for that too heavy to wear on your belt okay so this is strictly a pack mount or i can rig it up so it's a baldrick carry too all right i can it's just not rigged up for that all right so there's that one what else we got for carry systems okay i'm going through carries and options at the same time here okay so so as not to waste time right um here's a neat carry here this is uh the delta whiskey backpacker uh the, the, these knives are made by Joshua Blankenship at Ankara Knife Company. They're custom knives of my design. He builds them. So you got to go to him for the knife. And then when he's finished with it, he'll send it to me. And it'll be, you know, a custom knife and sheath system. That's completely tailored to you. Okay? So you work with him. To build the knife, you work with me to build the sheath system. Okay? So there's the backpacker. That's a fairly small knife. It's got a less than a three-inch blade. Okay? Uh, eighth inch. Uh, this one's CPM 3V. And yes, you can get them in CPM 3V. Uh, and here's the sheath I built for it. Okay? Now, this does a lot of different stuff. Right now, it's got an ulti clip on it. So that I can wear it on my left side when I have shorts on. Okay? And I clip it to the outside, right? Clip it to my pants and use it that way. Now, does it, does it flop around a little bit because it's only attached at this point? Yes. But I guarantee you, that thing is not coming off your belt. It's that tight. When you, when you push that plunger down... It's just ungodly tight. You can't get it off, okay? So you could take off running full tilt, and that thing's not coming off your shorts. That's why I like it, okay? Uh, I can also remove that. I can put it on the other side right here and wear it as a pocket carry, right? Um, I can actually put a combat lock belt clip on this because it has a mount plate. Right, here's the sheath, right? And there's the mount plate that I built for it. So it's set up for a molly lock or a tech lock or a combat lock. All right? So a lot of different carries in this one. I can even put a raptor dangler, clip a raptor dangler into this, right? And make it a dangler. A lot of different things we can do, okay? So there's that one. All right, let's take a look at this guy. I just built this one for a guy. All right, he dropped it off. He happens to live not far from me. Um, and this one is, right now, a strict pack carry. It's got a molly lock clip on it, okay? But it has a mount plate, so you can also put a belt clip on it as well. And in turn, a belt clip and a raptor dangler assembly if you want, Okay? A lot of versatility. Um, and that's what that's the difference between what I do and what a lot of other makers out there don't do. All right. Um, I do whatever you want, and I do a lot of different things. You just got to tell me what you want. That may require you to go to my website and check my sheaths out. Read some things, right? Invest a little bit of time into what I can do for you, right? Because you're never going to know unless you learn it, right? All right? So I've had many, many, many clients say to me, oh, man, I should have got that. I didn't know about it at the time. That's because you didn't go to my website and spend a little time on there, okay? It's not confusing. It's just got a lot of pictures, right? And a lot of information, that's for you, not me. So information is a good thing, guys. Um, I know in this day and age, we want it quick. We want it fast. We want it now. This is custom work. This is something different. Okay? If you want this thing to function well in the field for you, you got to invest a little bit of time in learning what it can be. All right? 
So there's that. That mount plate is key. Okay. Um, it does take me longer to build it, right? But it makes things more versatile as well. Okay. Here's here's my recommendation. Go for what you want. Spend the money now, and you won't have to spend it later because this thing will last you the rest of your life, and you can hand it down. Okay. That's how tough these are. Military grade, tough, bomb-proof sheath systems, but still not too heavy. All right? I'm very conscious about how much these things weigh, right? I will only put as thick a kydex as is absolutely needed to make it strong. And that's usually 093 or thicker. Kydex is not that heavy. It's about as heavy as leather. Honestly, okay, so there's that one. This one's got a face plate on it, okay. The face plate is purely aesthetic, it just looks cool, okay. There are things you can do with it, you can clip things to it and whatnot, but I, I don't recommend that. It's not secure. If, if something's not secure, I'm gonna let you know. I don't think that's secure, we shouldn't do it, okay. Other makers might do it, do it, and have it not be secure, and that's okay, right? That's one way of doing it. I just won't do it, right? So if it's not secure, I'm probably going to say something, and we're not going to build it that way. We're going to build it so that it is secure, okay? Um, here's one here. Let's talk about security, right? This clip here is fast and quick. But it is not secure. Okay. Any of you guys that have a clip on your sheath like this. That's got this little. Even a J hook. Not secure. Okay. Um, but very convenient. Just slip it on. This is if. Um, you know. You're not going to be out in the field. You're walking around town or something like that. Just want to slip it on your belt real quick. It's fairly secure. But it will slip off of there. If you're not conscious of what's going on down there. Plus you can adjust it. Okay? So mount plate. Mount plate. See it? Okay. Uh, here's a strict pocket carry, right? With an ulti clip. Just slip it in your pocket. This goes on the edge. Clip it on the edge of your pocket. And the handle sticks out just a little. You can actually put the push the handle in your pocket too if you want. Okay. This is a really cool system that we developed, um, and it works well. It works well. Chris Tanner loves these sheaths. He orders them all the time. He's probably got, over the years, five or six of them, I would think. Okay? This is black brick kydex here. Okay? It is adjustable if you want a little bit of the handle sticking out or, or not, a, not a lot of the handle, whatever, right? You can, there's a couple of different adjustments that you can slide this thing up and down, okay? Okay, let's talk about neck carry. Now, when it comes to neck carry, I recommend that you make it, you have me make it, as a pocket carry also. So it, it will come with an ulti clip that you can remove if you're not using it in pocket carry, right? Okay, let's move on to um, a sheath style that I normally don't build, and that's a pancake, okay? Now, even, even pancake style sheaths, um, can be slimmer if you build them that way but most of the time a pancake sheath is too wide too heavy too bulky and i don't like building them however for a dagger like this this is a fighting knife made by Eck, and this is a special forces presentation knife you can see the special forces crest uh the swick crest right special warfare center um Really, you know, presentation. I wish I had one of these, but they're hard to find. Okay, so I built a nice dagger sh style sheath for it. Okay, now this, he can put a molly lock on here. 
He can wear it as a belt carry. He can straighten up the belt clip, right? Straighten it up and put a Raptor Dangler assembly on it. Whatever he wants, okay? I build them so that you can do these things in the future if you don't want to do it right away, okay? I recommend you do it while I got it because it's easier for me just to build it all at once and it'll work perfectly, I promise you. But you got to like just step off that edge, right? Just step off that edge, take the plunge and pay the money and forget about it, okay? And I guarantee you, if you just give me a little bit of patience, I will build you one of the best custom sheath systems that you can get anywhere in the world. I know that's a, that's I know that's a, uh, uh, an arrogant uh, comment, but it's true. Um, I promise you, I will give you the best that I can build. Okay, every sheath I build is the ultimate best I can do. Okay. And I spend the time on it until it is right, until it works well, and you're going to be happy with it in the field. Because after I'm finished with it, I ask one question. Would I use this in the field, and would I pay for it? Absolutely. Right? So if I'll use it in the field, I can pretty much bet that you're going to be able to use it in the field. Okay? You can see how the, the uh, combat lock is put right in the middle of the sheath. That's because I have that mount plate. And I can put it anywhere I want. Okay? And the mount plate is very secure. I use 125 doubled for that. Okay? It's super strong. But if I keep it small like this, it's not doesn't weigh much. Now, I bet you this sheath doesn't weigh... 12 ounces. Let's see. Hold on. <laughs> That's funny. It's half that. It's 6.3 ounces. Okay, that's how much this weighs. 6.3 ounces. I would be willing to bet a leather sheath would be heavier than this. Okay? Okay, I want to show um, a couple more options here that that we offer. Okay, number one, um, generally, I personally don't mind using the standard mini compass that we offer. Okay, however, if you want a sun tow which is like the cream of the crop, best mini compass on the market type thing, right? They're a little pricey, but worth it. Highly precise. They, they work real quick. They glow in the dark, that type thing. Okay? And then we also offer a thermometer. Okay, now all these, all these options have been tested, okay? The thermometer usually sits right where it is on the shock cord of the ferro rod. Generally, that's where I'll put it. Um, it stays there. You don't have to worry about it falling off. No big deal, okay? I have one on several of my sheaths sitting right there or on top of this, right? And it, they work just fine. I've never had any problem with them in the field. Um, and these are in Fahrenheit, okay? The, the ones that I get are, are in Fahrenheit. It is 65 degrees down here, okay? Um, now, the, th the thermometer, it works slowly because they're oil-filled, okay? It, it, it measures temperature slowly, but they're pretty accurate, Okay? And they got this cover on them to protect the uh, actual compass. I mean, uh, thermometer. Okay? So there's that. Check out this knife. This is a Tony Shiflet Bushcrafter. 
I, I tell you, I like this knife. I, it's something about it. It's got a sharp 90 degree spine, convex grind. Really nice. He really does a good job. Uh, it's uh, Tony Shiflet at Tribal Custom Knives. I think he's on Facebook. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Here's a diamond rod. Okay, this is one of the diamond rods. Um, I showed you the ceramic. Okay, there's the <clears throat> ceramic rod right there. Okay, uh, here's uh, one of the diamond rods. Okay, you just undo the hub, take the shock cord off, slip the whole thing out, rig it up the way you want it to sharpen, then you can put it, put it all back on when you're finished. Very secure, not falling out of there, guaranteed. I promise you, you will never lose this rod unless you don't tighten down this hub. This hub has to be snug, okay? That's, it holds that rod in there under tension okay um i also have standalone diamond rods okay where i put my own handle on them um these are a little bit finer than those okay but this is the standalone one this one does not have a housing okay all right they're both about the same price um because it's the i charge for the um For the uh, sharpener, right? And also, let me uh, see what we got here. Here, the mount plate, okay? So the sharpener goes in here, and then the mount plate wraps around to the back and becomes a mounting plate for clips, okay? So I charge for both of them. It's a, it's a little system, okay? Uh, all right, that's it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you garnered some uh, good information from this video. There's a lot more that we can do. Check the website out, uh, www.yellowhawkcustomkydex.com. See ya!